So, um, what I need for you guys to do is to sign up today because we're making food and we need to know exactly at least a good idea of how many people are going to be there. If you do come, you get this cool red book um, that you get to keep for $5. <laughs> okay, it's five bucks. It costs $6.95, so you're getting a $2 discount. <laughs> okay? But it has a lot of good information. So what the Alpha Study is, is a time for you to discuss um, about faith. Questions like, is there more to this life? Who is Jesus? Why did he die? How can I have faith? How can I pray? How can I read the Bible better? Okay? Those are the things that we're going to eat first, and we're going to watch a short um, lesson on a topic, and we're going to have a time to discuss it together in small groups. That's what it's going to be about. 6.30 to 9. Be there or be square. Sign up today. By the way, I'm also needing people who want to volunteer and help. Okay? Um, so if you're interested, when you sign up today, to say, I would like to help, or if you can come, but you would like to pray, you would like to pray for this meeting, you know, put your name, I can't come, but I will pray for you, right? I really need prayer, guys. Not only me, but everyone who's gathering, because this is a God activity, isn't it? Another announcement I'd like to make, I was cleaning up in this uh, church the other day, and I found some great clothes. If no one claims it, I'm going to keep it, all right? So here it is. Is this anybody's? You, you people in Calgary wear this? <laughs> anybody's? No? No? Okay. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Giving thanks to the Lord. And before we do, why don't we just ask God to bless us? Would you pray with me? Father, we give this time to you, Lord. All blessings, they flow from you. You are the fountain of blessing. And God, today we want to learn about why it's important to give you thanks. Lord, speak through me. Speak your truth through me to your people, God, that we may be encouraged. We may come to know you more. Let the Holy Spirit do his work in our hearts today. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I want to teach you some Hebrew today. I've been itching to speak Hebrew and to, because I majored in Old Testament, okay? And so I want to teach you how to say, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His love endures forever in Hebrew. <laughs> Can we do that? Easy, all right? It's a cinch. All right, so, the first, I better not write it in Hebrew, I'll write it in English, okay? Hodu. Everybody say Hodu. Hodu means give thanks. Okay? Le Yahweh. Le Yahweh. That's the name of the Lord in the Old Testament. Okay? Hodu Le Yahweh. Everybody? Hodu Le Yahweh. Kitov. Kitov. Or He is good. Kile. Olam. Ki le olam chesedo. Okay, so that's the Middle Eastern. The you need to kind of when you're clearing your throat. <laughs> Unfortunately, that means love. <laughs> I guess when they love each other, they really just like to. I love you. <laughs> okay. So, who do? Le Yahweh, ki tov ki le olam chasido. Everybody together. Hodu le Yahweh, ki tov ki le olam chasido. All right. Give praise to the Lord, for He is good. Tov is good. Ki le olam. That's forever. For forever. Chasido is love. Okay. Now we live. In a rapidly changing world, and <coughs> even terrorism is changing. We had Al Qaeda, now we have ISIS terrorizing the world. The economy is very fickle. A million people in Calgary is affected by the price of one thing, one commodity, oil, as you all know. 
And recently, because of the price decrease, I hear a lot of jobs have been affected. People have lost their jobs. So we live in a world where things are changing rapidly and things are not stable. There are too many variables that affect our society and it keeps us on edge, making us feel insecure sometimes and worse, sometimes unsafe. Even for Christians who profess to believe in God, the changing circumstances at work, at school, at home, even at church, it affects our faith. We have a daisy mentality of faith. We say, he loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. And it's, it depends on whether our life is favorable to us or not. And so because of this instability of the world in which we live, the vulnerabilities of life, not to mention the pressures of our daily responsibilities, we find it difficult to thank God. We don't type, take time to give praise to God for the things that we have. And yet, our future depends on whether we give thanks to God and give Him credit for the blessings, for His guidance in our life. Our future depends on it. Because when we thank God, we're reminded of His power, we're reminded of His goodness, and we're reminded of His love toward us. And the passage we read today in 1 Chronicles is David. He's calling His people to thank God for what he has done. And he gives us two reasons. Because he told his God. Ki le'olam chesed. His love is permanent. And today I want to talk to you about those two things. Whether you're, you're standing on solid ground today, or maybe you're on kind of a rocky ground, I want you to know that the creator of the universe, the king of kings, he is good because he's actively watching over your life. Even though he's very lofty and high, he's God, he's actively involved in your life. Not only that, his goodness and love is unchanging. It's unchanging. So, the scripture we read it's a psalm of thanksgiving. It actually starts from verse 8 and goes all the way to verse 35. And David wrote it when he became king of Israel. Through his leadership, Israel had came to be known for the first time as an independent nation. Before David, Israel was known as just a band of loose tribal families, scraping, barely surviving, among nations greater than they were. But David had faith in God, Yahweh, and he, he had defeated the neighboring enemy, the Philistines. And the news of David and Israel had spread all throughout the land. And In 1 Chronicles chapter 14, 17, I wanted to show you the one before this slide. Do we have one? Go back. Okay. The one before this. Okay, there's supposed to be one more, I guess. All right. So, in 1 Chronicles chapter 14, 17, it says this. And the fame of David went out into all lands, and the Lord brought fear of him upon all nations. So Israel had become a very a, a formidable and an independent nation. And during this time is when David, he is, he is calling his people to recognize how they got there. That the victory, the security, and the stability that the people enjoyed was because of God's power and God's help. And David is saying, we need to remember this. And recognize this for the future. Because Israel still lived among 
very, it was bigger and more powerful nations. They had Egypt as their neighbor. They had Syria, Sidonians, Assyria, Babylonia, much bigger nations surrounded Israel. And David is saying, don't forget God's power. And David was teaching the priests to thank God and praise God during this time of affluence to remember how they got there, not to forget God. And so, next slide. He, he says to the people, when you were few in number, little account, and sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he, meaning God, allowed no one to oppress them. He, God, rebuked kings on their account, saying, touch not my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. I don't know about you guys, but I could really relate to the people of Israel. When I was, I met my wife in China when I was teaching English. And after marrying her, we stayed there for a year and a half in China, Tianjin. And we stayed in the um, international school dormitory. After a year and a half, we moved to Boston because I felt God calling me to ministry to study at Gordon Collins Theological Seminary in Boston, East Coast. Cold. Much colder than here. As you can see, I have my sleeves up because without it, I'll be sweating. It's warm, okay? He <laughs> said he was going to be freezing. <laughs> okay, right, that's kind of weird. Boston. I'm from California, right? I grew up in California. Cold. <laughs> Not my home. We stayed there three years in the school uh, housing. Then we moved back to Korea to be with my mother because she had lymphoma. Lymphoma is cancer of blood, of the blood. We stayed with her for a year. And we also stayed with my in-laws down South Korea, moving back and forth. And now we're here in Calgary. And we're kind of still sojourning, right? We're still kind of visitors. And looking back, God, when we were thanking God and recognizing Him, He was just leading us. But when we forgot to thank God, even though we didn't have a home, when we forgot to thank God for the things that we had, we always ran into trouble. So I could relate to what Israel was going through it. So sometimes we forget to thank God for His goodness in our life. We forget that we've come to a better place because of God's help. Think about your life, where you are. Are you in a better place now 10 years ago? If not, you're doing something wrong. Talk to me. You're probably in a better place because of God's help. Do you think this came about just because you worked hard? Just because you made the right choices? Without God's goodness and favor, we would never have made it this far. But it's not easy to thank God when there's so much affluence, ironically. <laughs> when everything is available anytime, anywhere, we kind of get spoiled. We get immersed in a comfort zone. And we begin to think that we deserve what we have. And we deserve more. Not only that, we come to believe that we earned it ourselves. And Calgary is actually one of those places I find it very convenient and comfortable to live here. Everything we need is available, just a stone throws away. Wherever you live in Calgary, any area, there is a shopping center within one to five minutes driving distance, 10 to 15 minute walking distance. Even for those brave souls who live way down south, 
I won't mention any names. They're not in the southwest quadrant. They're not in the southeast quadrant. They're just down south somewhere. Don't know if they have grocery stores, stores back there, but I do know they have a big hospital, but you won't find a box of cereal there or a carton of milk. So it's easy to take God's grace for granted and thanklessness, thanklessness creeps in. I found this monster of ungratefulness eating away at me just this week in my family. I was demanding my son to be more behaved. He's four years old. Listen! <laughs> Obey! I was demanding my wife to listen to me more. Why don't you respect me? I'm the pastor, right? I demand you respect me. <laughs> Getting our money, please respect me. More demands, less grace. But while I was preparing this message about Thanksgiving, God was convicting me. He was saying and reminding me to thank God for my children, as unruly and annoying they may be. Most of the time, all the time. But I ought to be thankful to have children and healthy children. Because some couples, they struggle to have kids. I just met another pastor. They've been having, trying to have a child for the past four years. Still no ch children. In vitro fertilization, very expensive. Also, I was reminded to thank God for my wife. I was forgetting that I'm lucky to be married. Because I married late. I was in my late 30s when I met Ruth. I was, in Korean terms, a no chongak. No, right, means in Korean, old. Chongak is a bachelor. I was an old bachelor, right? You guys saw the movie, the 40-year-old virgin. I was not like that, but my, my situation was similar in that you know, I was getting desperate a little bit, 37. But not only did God allow me to meet a beautiful lady, but she's also young <laughs> and healthy. <laughs> young and healthy. I don't know why that's funny, but it just is. So I was downstairs preparing the message, so in, actually in tears, I was regretting how I was treating my family, not being thankful. And I was, I got on my knees and I was like, God, I just thank you for my son. I thank you for my daughter. I thank you for my wife. And that was a beginning, I think, and I hope, of a more appreciative husband and a more understanding father. That was the beginning. And I thanked God. Now, you may find it difficult to see the goodness of God in your life, as I had. Maybe you genuinely feel that you have nothing to thank God for. Maybe you're too busy, caught up on your own life. Whatever your reasons may be, you have to know that thanklessness and not thanking God is actually a sin, the Bible says. Paul, in the book of Romans, describing the sinfulness of unbelieving people, says this. For although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were hardened. So Paul likens thanklessness as a darkness in the heart. And Tim Keller, the founding pastor of Redeemer Church in New York City, in his book, Jesus the King, puts it this way. When the Bible talks about sin, it is not just referring to the bad things we do. It's not just lying or lust, or whatever the case may be. It is ignoring God in the world He has made. That's what Tim Keller says. When we do not thank God, we are ignoring Him in the world He has made. And so, in fact, Paul, he says we should thank God in all circumstances. Not only when things are going well, also when things may not be going well. Paul says to the church in Thessalonica, he says, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you 
in Christ Jesus. And so in the passage we read today, David, he gives us two reasons why we can and we should thank God always, especially in life's toughest moments. And this is what David says. He says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. Now, to thank somebody, to, to thank somebody is to express gratitude, appreciation, and acknowledgement of a benefit or favor received. Meaning, we must acknowledge that we have received a benefit or favor from God in order to thank God. And the Hebrew word for thank is yada, which means to confess and to acknowledge God, yada. This is how you would read it, yada. And you would write it like this. Yada means to thank, or actually it means, literally it means to throw, because it comes from the word hand, yad. This means hand. When you add an a ah to it, it's a directional marker. You're throwing your hand. You know, yada. It's not slapping, right? <laughs> Don't yada anybody, right? Don't yada anybody. You're, you're throwing something to somebody. Yada. But when you, when you thank somebody, you add H in front of it, and so it becomes hodu. Okay? When you add H to it, it turns into give thanks. So this becomes to give thanks or to confess. Okay? So it comes from the word hand, to throw, to give thanks. And so, you know, when you see in church people raising hands like this and giving thanks, you know, when they're opening their hands, their palms to God, like, God, I thank you. You know, I recognize you. I confess your love and your goodness in my life. Okay? And so, at the end of the service, I'm going to give you an opportunity. You Presbyterians need to learn. And I have to show you guys that you can worship God and you can express your worship and praise to God with your body, giving thanks to the Lord. So, I want to ask you a question now. Can you, do you acknowledge that you have received the goodness of God in your life? Have you accepted His, God's unconditional love for your life? If we cannot say yes to this, then it would be very difficult to thank God. But if we do say yes, then we should give thanks to God for His goodness. Now, here's the meat of the message. I want to present to you two aspects of God's goodness that whether you know it or not, you have benefited Two aspects of God's goodness. And this should cause you not only to thank God, but praise Him with all your heart. Okay? So, the first aspect of God's goodness comes from when David says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. But it comes from where God is in this position. God he is in the highest position possible. He is in the highest position possible. And this is the point that David makes in his song. David says he's the creator of heaven and earth. He is the Lord of all. He reigns. The goodness of God must begin with who God is in his position, that he is high above all things. Okay? And that's what David is making the point in his song. That we should praise God because he's the creator of heaven and earth. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. The next one. When you look at the next one. 
When you look at th this psalm, you see a pattern. And what David does is he gives an exhortation. Give thanks, praise God, and then he gives an evidence for his deed. What did God do? So this is how he starts. This is the beginning of the psalm. He says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make note his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing praise to him. Tell of his, all his wondrous works. Praise him for his works. That's what David is getting at. And then he begins to talk about specific things that God has done for Israel. Okay? After this, he recounts what, what God did in bringing the people when they were just a few in number. And God had brought them through the desert. God led them and into the promised land, even though they were a fledgling, you know, a bunch of uh, ragged tag Bedouins, that's the word, Bedouins, right? They were Bedouins. They were shepherds, basically. And God, and, 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 and then after that, in verse 23, he goes back to this pattern. Next slide. He says, sing to the Lord. Tell of his salvation. Declare his glory. Great is the Lord. Why? And this is the main point he's trying to make. The Lord made the heavens. What does he say before that? All the gods of the people are worthless. So the nations, they worship the idols. But the Lord, he made heaven. Next slide. He says, ascribe to the Lord, O families of the earth. Ascribe to the Lord glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Why? The world is established. It shall never be moved. Next. So God, he summarizes and says, let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The Lord is king. Actually, in Hebrew, the Lord reigns here. It could be translated as the Lord is king. Okay? Now, I want to give you guys a quick, another lesson in uh, Bible reading. When you read in the Old Testament, and you have these capital letters, Lord, this is actually, in the original Hebrew, it's the name of God. It's Yahweh. The Jewish people, they hold the name of God to be so sacred that they don't pronounce it. So when they read the Bible, and they come to the name of God, Yahweh, they can't say it. So they replace it with Adonai. Adonai, which means Lord. And the English Bible, most English Bibles, they follow this tradition, and they put Lord here. And it should be Yahweh. Okay. So here, where it says the Lord reigns, is pointing to a specific, it's pointing to our God, right? Yahweh reigns, and He is King. Okay? So, David says, God, he's the creator, and he reigns, but he's not done yet. That's not the only reason why God is good. God is good because even in this loftiness, he is concerned about his creation. He's concerned about our lives. When you're in a high position... You don't concern yourself with the lowly people. Look at your boss. Is he concerned about your life if you're working? Is he concerned about your day-to-day -day tasks? Does he come and, says, and say, oh, Daryl, man, great job. Man, you're really, you know, hooking up those wires pretty well. Do you need a hand with that? Bosses, they have their secretaries do their work. They have the hired hands. They're not concerned with the people at the bottom of the tier. Look at the, your professor. He stands up on the lecture, lectures for an hour. What does he do? Does he come to you and say, hey, Andrew, man, how are you doing? You know, how's the studies going? Is he concerned about how well you're learning? No, he walks out the door. Who does most of the work of teaching? The TAs do, if they do at all. And if you want to learn, what do you do? Yeah, the professor, he has office hours. But you have to go there in his time. He's not actively involved in your welfare. Even parents sometimes, right? My little boy comes to me, Daddy, leave me up a get away. <laughs> I'm busy preparing the sermon. <laughs> what an example of that I am. People in high positions, they don't meddle with the stuff below. But God, he's in the highest position, and yet David says, he's coming to earth. Go to the next slide. Let the sea roar, let all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. 
He's coming to judge the earth. That's why in the next verse, David says, thank God, the God you serve. He is good. He's good because even though he's high, he comes down low. And he's active in our life. Caring for the details. He says he's coming. That's actually a participle in Hebrew. For he comes, it's a participle ing. So it should actually be translated, he's coming to judge the earth. But we know he has come. Jesus has come. David says, give thanks because your God is a God who cares. Second reason. Of, second aspect of God's goodness why we should thank Him. First one was that He's God He deigns to come down and care for our needs. Second is that he takes on, he takes on our needs, or he meets our real need. He knows what we really need. When you ask for a girlfriend, God's not going to give it to you, because he knows better, right? When you ask for a boyfriend, God, I don't want a boyfriend like Justin Timberlake. I don't know where that came from. Don't quote me on that. Stop recording, right? God's not going to give it to you because he knows better. Sometimes we think, you know, if my husband or my wife was a little bit better, if my children listened to me more, if my friends would understand me. If I had a boyfriend, if I had a girlfriend, if I was more beautiful, if I had more talents, then I would thank God. Then I would be happy. But you know, God knows better. He knows our real need. He's like a good physician. He's like a good physician. So, for example, if you have kids, you have to take them and get them immune, you know, you get the shots, right? The vaccines. Now, as a good doctor, you know it's going to be painful. You know, the polio shots, the uh, chicken pox shots. So many shots. Gosh, I feel sorry for my kids, you know, every time I go in. Bam, ah, bam, ah. Sometimes you get two. Ah, ah. Right? One is okay, but two is a little too much. And I'm just like, oh, gosh, can't you just be a little bit softer? But how can you be soft with the needle? But a good physician knows that that temporary pain is necessary for the protection and the betterment. And that's kind of like God. He knows our real need. He doesn't look at our surface needs. You know, all these things I talked about, those are surface needs. Our real need is to be restored in our relationship with our real need is the sin in our hearts. The thing that keeps us away from God. Why did Jesus come? Why is he coming to judge? It's the sin. Jesus came because of our sins that separate us from God. The inclination that says, oh, I don't need to thank God. Oh, I can live my life on my own. I want to live my life on my own, apart from God. That sin. Jesus came because he knows our real need is for God. We need God. That is our real need. And Jesus came to meet it. The Lord God, he is good. Because he came to meet our need. And guess what? He is judge. And he deserves to sentence everyone who is guilty. And we are all guilty, the Bible says. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
But Jesus took the, the punishment and the penalty upon himself. He came to judge, and yet he took the penalty upon himself. That's why he died on the cross. And Jesus says, and Jesus had the power, and he says, he said before, you know, when he was on the cross, people are saying, man, if you're the Messiah, come down. If you are the Son of God, why don't you come down? And Jesus said, you know, I can. I can call legions of angels right now who are at my Father's side. But that's not going to take care of your need. You know? I came to judge sin, to take that away. Because God is good. See? Those two are the reasons why we can thank God. Now, I want to show you kind of, if you're thinking, well, you know, he's, God is high, yeah, but he's God. He can, he can come down if he wants to. I mean, that's not a big deal. But I just want to show you kind of the magnitude of who God is. Okay? Through a couple of slides. Next slide. Stars. The sun is one star in the Milky Way galaxy that we live. Okay? Who knows how many stars, as an estimate, of course, just roughly how many stars are in the Milky Way galaxy that we live in? 100 million? 400 billion is an estimate. It's a scientific estimate. 400 billion. Give or take 200 billion. <laughs> it's in the hundreds of billions, okay? In the Milky Way galaxy. Next slide. That's the, that's the actual picture of a galaxy... That's not our galaxy. That's a galaxy out there taken by Hubble Telescope. Okay? The Hubble Telescope is so powerful that from the Earth, it can detect the, a light that a, fire, a firefly would give off on the moon. Okay? So it's able to take these pictures. But that's one galaxy. How many galaxies do you think are in the universe? Estimate. Hundreds of billions of galaxies. Like the galaxy we live, the Milky Way galaxy, where there's hundreds of billions of stars like the sun. And we're living on earth. And David says, God created it all. And yet, he comes down for you and I. He comes down for you and I. This God, this awesome God. So why shouldn't we give praise? Those lights, thank you. I didn't give you a clue, but the Holy Spirit gave you the clue. The cube. Those different lights are galaxies. This is an actual picture taken by the Hubble telescope. You have the blue, the orange. Those are, all the spots are galaxies. They're not stars. They're galaxies in which are billions of stars. It's my theory, actually, that there is no limit. The universe that God created is limitless. That's just my theory. You know how people thought the earth was like flat and it was round? Kind of, I don't know. I just think, it's just God, the infinite God. I hope you can agree that God is good. You know, when he comes down for you and I. Awesome God. The last point that I want to make is this. Why does God do this? Because he loves us. Because of his love for us. That's why he comes down. But we should thank God not only for his love, but because his love is permanent. His love is permanent. It doesn't change. So when things are going bad in your life, no, when, when it seems like people around you don't love you or they're not treating you right, God's love, that remains constant. You know, just this morning, I was, I opened my uh, door to our balcony and I was, because it was so hot, I had to open my door. <laughs> my son was like, Daddy, I'm hot. I'm like, 
you're right, son. Let's open the doors and get the fresh in. I opened the door, and from our balcony, we had this wonderful view of the Rocky Mountains you know, and all the snow in it. And I kind of imagine God's love, the permanence of God's love for us, kind of like the Rocky Mountains. It's just there, always. It doesn't move. It doesn't change. And so David says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And His love is unchanging. It's eternal. I hope that throughout this week, no matter what happens okay, in your life, remember that. God is good. Jesus came for me. And His love, it doesn't change. He still loves me now. And take time to pray and thank God. I want us to imagine in your left hand are kind of like the bad things that, you know, keep you from God. You could call it sin. Okay? I want you to raise your left hand to the Lord like this. Go like this. Lift it up to God. You're lifting up to God. Okay, now. Remember what I said. When we thank God, it comes from the word hand. With your right hand as an expression of thanks, giving, say, God, I thank you for your love and your goodness. Raise it up to the Lord. Let's pray. God, you're so good, and your love never changes. Help us to remember your goodness and love this week, and to remember to thank you not only for the blessings you have given, like our family, friends, and job, but to thank you for who you are and give us faith. Give us faith to know that you are with us and that your love never changes. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.